नमस्कार अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज रेणुका एंड विद मी इज रेणु कटारिया ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ द मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शैल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस India's Arshad Patel appointed as Vice President of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Indian diaspora has distinguished itself all over the world and excelled in different spheres. External Affairs Minister of India Dr S Jayashankar says India France cooperation with respect to Indo-Pacific has a larger significance. Russia says it would not make any concessions under US pressure at talks on the Ukraine crisis. United States and Japan agree to keep American troops within their bases as worries grow about a sharp rise in coronavirus cases. And in tennis, world number 1 Ashley Barty wins at the Lade International, while Simona Halep claims Melbourne summer set title of women's singles. As the number of COVID-19 cases are rising fast in several parts of the country, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and get fully vaccinated and help others including children between 15 and 18 years to get vaccinated. As a new Omicron variant of coronavirus is causing concern, please continue to follow these three simple st- steps to stay safe, wear a face mask, maintain 2 gauge ki for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact National Healthline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Former Reserve Bank of India RBI Governor Urjit Patel has been appointed as a Vice President of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank AIIB a Beijing based multilateral development bank he will succeed outgoing Vice President DJ Pandian who is in charge of sovereign and non sovereign lending of the AIIB in South Asia the Pacific Islands and Southeast Asia Mr Patel 58 told Prasar Bharti special correspondent in Beijing that he will be joining on 1st of February. He will be one of the five vice presidents of the AIIB with a 3 year tenure. Mr Pandian, a former Gujarat chief secretary, has been AIIB's vice president and chief investment officer since 2016, the year the bank was set up with India as its second largest shareholder after China. Urjit Patel is currently the chairman of the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. He had taken over as the 24th governor of the Reserve Bank of India RBI succeeding Raghuram Rajan in September 2016 and was with RBI till December 2018. An economist with great repute Mr Patel will take over as vice president at a time when AI IB is expanding its footprint in developing countries especially India where infrastructure is seen as a key driver for growth AIIB is currently headed by China's Jin Lekun who is a former Chinese vice minister for finance India has emerged as AIIB's biggest beneficiary by obtaining 6.8 billion dollar funding for 29 projects outgoing vice president Mr Pandian told Prasar Bharti Beijing in an exclusive interview last november india is celebrating the pravasi bharatiya divas pbd on sunday it was on this day in 1915 mahatma gandhi the greatest pravasi bharatiya returned to india india is proud of its largest diaspora across the globe which consists of around 31 million people we spoke to dr bharat bhutani former president of indian business and professional council dubai तीन दशकों से अधिक समय से संयुक्त अरब अमीरात का निवासी हूँ सबसे पहले इस वर्ष भी पिछले वर्ष की भांति इस चुनौतीपूर्ण समय में पीबीडी मनाने की परंपरा को बनाए रखने के लिए प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी और उनकी सरकार को हार्दिक बधाई देता हूँ संयुक्त अरब अमीरात के आर्थिक विकास में प्रवासी भारतीयों का योगदान भारत यू ए संबंधों के सबसे मजबूत स्तंभों में ऐसी एक है Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has greeted non-resident Indians on this occasion. In a tweet, Mr Naidu urged the NRI to redouble their efforts in contributing for the growth and development of India. He also urged them to continue to act as cultural ambassadors of India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted people, especially the Indian diaspora on Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. In a tweet, he said Indian diaspora has distinguished itself all over the world and has excelled in different spheres. 
Mr. Modi said at the same time, they have remained connected to their roots. He said India is proud of their accomplishments. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar also greeted the Indian diaspora. In a tweet, he said their achievements are a source of pride for all. Indian Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murali Dharan has said that the youth, both from India as well as diaspora community, have made a remarkable journey in innovation, technology and creativity. Addressing the Youth Pravasi Bharatiya Divas Conference 2022 through video conferencing, he said, Youth are playing a key role in determining the direction of where our society and the world is moving by bringing technological changes and using it in innovative ways. Mr. Murali Dharan said, from Sundar Pichai to Parag Agarwal and Rajiv Suri to Lina Nair, several luminaries are proof of Indian youth leadership on the global stage. The minister said our diaspora serves as a bridge connecting India to the world. India is among the very few countries which has an extensive and evolving policy framework for engagement with the diaspora. The priority of the government led by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji is to build everlasting links with the Indian diaspora the world over. Whenever the Prime Minister is overseas, we see a grand welcome to the leader and the enormous shower of love on him. It's actually the faith of our diaspora being reposed on India and their pride in Indianness. Under the Prime Minister's leadership, our outreach to the diaspora has taken new dimensions and evolved in a way where we are moving towards the concept of global India. The Embassy of India in Beijing celebrated the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. The event saw huge participation by the enthusiastic Indian diaspora in China. Addressing the gathering, Charles de Affairs, Dr. Equino Vimal said, For our diaspora in China, the last couple of years have been particularly challenging in view of travel restrictions imposed due to COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, he assured the Indian community of the embassy's unrelenting efforts to raise their concerns with all the relevant authorities in China at every possible opportunity. He added that the Indian embassy will continue to do so till an acceptable solution is arrived at. Dr. Vimal said, although the Indian community in China is relatively small, we are connected and united. He applauded the activeness of the community in celebrating Indian culture and traditions despite all the limitations. He recalled the vibrancy of the activities conducted by various communities in the last one year. He further said occasions like this bring us together for fellowship and further strengthen our bonding and friendships. As India celebrates Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, the Indian community today showcased their talent and their love for Indian culture by staging a performance based on Ramayana, which was the showstopper of the entire event. Mr. Vimal said it is a true depiction of the Indian diaspora as it symbolizes the vibrancy of a small and enthusiastic diaspora, some of them living separated from their loved ones, but still carrying forward the tradition and values which we want the world to see and learn from. This was greatly admired by the audience, especially a few foreign guests. A documentary on India's ancient traditional sports, Kabaddi, was screened on the occasion, which Mr. Wimmel said befittingly recognizes the value and strength of our traditional sports on the 75th anniversary of our independence. Indian community shared their joy with Prasar Bharti correspondent in Beijing and emphasized their roles in being cultural ambassadors for India in foreign land. Let me wish you all first a happy Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. The Pravasi Bharatiya Divas is a special day, as we all know, especially for us, the Indian diaspora, that have been living out of our motherland, India, for a long time. So this gives us a very wonderful opportunity for us to get connected with our motherland, India. Namaskar, my name is Akhil Parashar, and I live in the city of Beijing. And today, the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas has been created in Beijing, in the city of Beijing, and in this particular day, जो जितने भी भारतवंशी है जो भारतीय लोग है जो चीन में रहते हैं वो आज यहाँ एकजुट हुए प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस पर बहुत ही अहम बात है ये प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस पर हमने शक्ति द पावर रामायण का मंचन किया ये एक अवसर है हमारे जैसे थिएटर प्रेमियों के लिए कि भारत के बाहर रह के भी हम भारत की सेवा कर सकते हैं भारत का कल्चर अनुभव कर सकते हैं एंड ये हमारा एफर्ट है कि इंडियन वैल्यूज इंडियन एपिक के द्वारा हमारे इंडियन डायस्पोरा के लिए और अदर नेशन के लिए हम परफॉर्म कर सके 
उनके लिए प्रस्तुत कर सके उन्हें एक मैसेज दे सके कि भारतीय संस्कृति क्या है थ्रू द फॉर्म ऑफ थिएटर ये हमारा प्रयास रहा दिस गिव्स अस ट्रिमेंडस ट्रिमेंडस पावर एंड पोटेंशियल एंड करेज टू बी एन इंडियन आउटसाइड ऑफ इंडिया नमस्ते मेरा नाम श्वेता नाइक है मैं बेसिकली पुणा से हूँ अभी बीजिंग में ये मेरा तीसरा साल है अभी ऐसा है कि कंसिडर सिचुएशन हम लोग जा नहीं पाते हैं इंडिया फ्रिक्वेंटली एम्बेसी ऑफ इंडिया इन बीजिंग लाइक सेकेंड होम फॉर अस तो यहाँ पे अभी हम अमृत महोत्सव जो चल रहा है आजादी का तो हम ऑलमोस्ट एवरी वीकेंड हम यहाँ पे आते हैं कुछ ना कुछ सेलिब्रेशन चलते रहता है आज भी आप देख सकते हैं कि मैं एक पर्टिकुलर मेकअप में हूँ क्योंकि हम आज यहाँ पे प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस का सेलिब्रेशन कर रहे थे जहाँ पे हमने शक्ति द पावर ये एक प्ले किया था जो कि रामायण पे आधारित है नेक्स्ट वीक हम लोग लोहरी भी सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं तो हर महीने में कुछ ना कुछ सेलिब्रेशन यहाँ पे चलता रहता है वो जो कमी हमें हमेशा खलती रहती है कि मिल नहीं पाते हैं लोग उससे सेलिब्रेशन नहीं कर पाते हैं वो कमी यहाँ पे आके पूरी होती है और अच्छा लगता है कि इन सारे इवेंट्स के जरिए हम हमारा कल्चर लोगों तक पहुंचा सकते हैं इन बांग्लादेश इंडियन हाई कमीशन इन ढाका सेलिब्रेटेड द प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस स्पीकिंग ऑन दिस ओकेजन गौरव चक्रवर्ती डिप्टी सीओ ऑफ इंडियन वीजा एप्लीकेशन सेंटर्स ढाका सेड दैट द प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस रिमाइंड अस टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू मदरलैंड प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस इज नॉट ओनली अ डे ऑफ सेलिब्रेशन फॉर दाइज बट दिस डे डिमांड्स अस द प्रवासी our collective responsibility towards our country the great mahatma gandhi returned on this very day to india realizing his responsibility towards his country and we all know the rest is history it's time awaken our inner mahatma and contribute to the growth and development of our country in our own way i wish you all a very happy pravasi bharatiya divas Rishi Nimal Greaves Cotton Limited India country manager bangladesh said that our heart and soul resides in india नमस्कार मैं ऋषिकेश निमल ग्रीस कॉटन लिमिटेड इंडिया के तरफ से बांग्लादेश में बेस्ड हूँ एज ए कंट्री मैनेजर प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस एक ऐसा फोरम है जो इंडियन गवर्नमेंट ने जो प्रस्तावित किया है जो रिकॉग्नाइज करता है इंडियन सिटीजन को जो बाहर रह के भी इंडियन इंडियन इकोनॉमी और कल्चर में हेल्प करते हैं इकोनॉमी बूस्ट करने के लिए वैसे ही इंडिया और बांग्लादेश में काफी कल्चरल सिमिलैरिटीज है जो काफी रिलेशनशिप को मेंटेन करता है दोनों कंट्रीज के बीच में इंडियन गवर्नमेंट के जो दूतावास जो यहाँ बेस्ड है इंडियन हाई कमीशन उनका काफी सपोर्टिव रोल रहता है इंडियन एक्सपर्ट्स को और जो एनआरए जो यहाँ बेस्ड है दूसरे कंट्रीज में ताकि इंडिया को अच्छे से रिप्रेजेंट कर सके और काफी अच्छा उससे बॉन्डिंग क्रिएट कर सके सभी कंट्रीज के बीच में एंड लेट एस लिसन टू डॉक्टर लोपा मुद्रा भट्टाचार्जी ओडिसी डांसा विश माई फेलो प्रभाषी फ्रेंड्स एंड सिटीजन ऑफ आर कंट्री अ वेरी हैप्पी प्रवासी भारतीय दिवस वी मे बी स्टेइंग आउटसाइड अवर कंट्री but our heart and soul always reside in our india in this testing time when our country and whole world is fighting against a different variant of covid our responsibility towards our country increases may the prabhati keep contributing towards the development and growth of our country External Affairs Minister of India Dr S J Shankar has said that the India France cooperation with respect to the Indo-Pacific has a larger significance. He said this while speaking to French Foreign Minister Jean Vers Le Drian on Sunday. Both the ministers recognized that the achievements of India France cooperation in 2021 are a strong foundation for 2022. In a tweet Dr J Shankar said the presidency of the European Union that France occupies adds an important dimension to India France strategic relationship This is All India Radio giving you the world news for quick news updates around the clock follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts Prime Minister Narendra Modi today chaired a high level virtual meeting to review the COVID-19 situation in the country ongoing preparedness of health infrastructure and logistics status of the vaccination campaign and the emergence of new covid-19 variant omicron and its public health implications for the country a detailed presentation highlighting the surge in cases currently being reported globally was given by health secretary it was followed by the status of covid-19 in india highlighting various states and districts of concern based on the surge in cases and high positivity being reported Further various efforts taken by the central government so far in terms of supporting states to manage the upcoming challenge were highlighted various predicted scenarios of peak cases were also presented the support to the states to upgrade health infrastructure testing capacity availability of oxygen and icu beds 
and buffer stock of COVID essential drugs under emergency COVID response package ECRP2 was presented. The Prime Minister stressed on the need to ensure adequate health infrastructure at the district level. He asked officials to maintain coordination regarding this with the states. The presentation brought attention to India's consistent efforts towards the vaccination campaign, with 31% adolescents aged 15 to 18 years having been administered with the first dose so far within seven days. Mr. Modi noted this achievement and urged to further accelerate the vaccine drive for adolescents in mission mode. After detailed discussion, the Prime Minister directed that intensive containment and active surveillance should continue in clusters reporting higher cases and required technical support to be provided to states which are reporting higher cases presently. He highlighted the need to ensure effective usage of masks and physical distancing measures as a new normal to control the spread. Mr. Modi further exhorted the need for effective implementation of home isolation for mild or asymptomatic cases and to disseminate the factual information to the community at large. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said that there is no plan for lockdown as of now in the national capital. Briefing reporters on Sunday, Mr. Kejriwal said lockdown will not be imposed in the city if people continue to wear masks and follow COVID-appropriate behaviour. He said his government's attempt is to impose minimum restrictions so that livelihoods are not affected. Administration of precaution dues for healthcare and frontline workers and those over 60 years of age with comorbidities will begin from tomorrow. The centre has issued guidelines stating that no new registration will be required to get a precaution dose. The eligible population who have taken two doses of COVID-19 vaccine can directly take an appointment or walk into any vaccination centre. The online appointment for the precaution dose shots began yesterday where one can book their slots. The prioritization and sequencing of this precaution dose will be based on the completion of 9 months or 39 weeks from the date of administration of second dose. All persons aged 60 years and above with comorbidities who have received two doses of COVID-19 vaccine will be provided precautionary dose on doctor's advice from tomorrow. All citizens, irrespective of their income status, are entitled to free COVID-19 vaccination at government vaccination centers. The co-win system will send SMS to such beneficiaries for availing the precaution dose when the dose becomes due. All election officials and employees deployed for election duty will be treated as frontline workers and will also be administered precaution dose. China reported its first local COVID-19 cases infected with the Omicron variant in the eastern port city of Tianjin. This has increased the challenge for the country to contain the more contagious form of the virus that has been driving up daily caseloads around the world. The city of Tianjin is just 100 kilometers away from the national capital Beijing, which will be hosting the 2022 Winter Olympics in less than a month's time. United States and Japan on Sunday agreed to keep American troops within their bases as worries grew about a sharp rise in coronavirus cases in the country. The restrictions starting Monday will last 14 days, confining U.S. military personnel to base facilities except for essential activities, a statement from the U.S. forces in Japan said. The Japanese foreign ministry released the same statement. It said that the allies will share information and cooperate on coronavirus measures. The statement said U.S. military members will wear masks both on and off base when outside their homes and will continue to carry out strict testing before leaving for and after arrival in Japan. New COVID-19 cases have surged in Japan, jumping above 8,000 on Saturday, a four-month record. The spike has been most pronounced in areas near U.S. bases. Last week, Japan asked the U.S. for cooperation in keeping its military personnel on base. Okinawa, a southwestern group of islands that houses most of the 55,000 U.S. troops in Japan, is among the three prefectures where separate government restrictions kicked in Sunday. Meanwhile, about 80% of the population have received their second vaccine shots. Russia said on Sunday it would not make any concessions under U.S. pressure at talks this week on the Ukraine crisis and its demand for Western security guarantees and that there was a risk they might end quickly. Talks are due in Geneva, Brussels and Vienna, but the state-owned RIA news agency quoted Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rybakov as saying it was entirely possible that diplomacy could end abruptly after a single meeting. 
He was quoted saying, as he can't rule out anything, this is an entirely possible scenario and the Americans should have no illusions about this. He said also, naturally, we will not make any concessions under pressure and in the course of threats that are constantly being formed by the Western participants of the upcoming talks. Interfax news agency quoted Rybakov, who will read the Russian delegation in Geneva, as saying, Moscow was not optimistic going into the talks. His comment signaled an up uncompromising line from Moscow at the tennis point in U.S.-Russian relations since the Cold War. Meanwhile, Kazakhstan's authorities said on Sunday that the situation was stabilizing after the worst political unrest in 30 years of independence and that troops from a Russian-led military alliance were guarding key facilities. Security officials told President Kasim Jomar Tokayev in a briefing they were continuing clean-up operations across the oil and uranium-producing ex-Soviet Republic that borders Russia and China. Thousands have been detained and public buildings torched during mass anti-government protests over the past week. In the United States, more than 8 lakh non-citizens and dreamers in New York City will have access to the ballot box and could vote in municipal elections as early as next year after Mayor Eric Adams allowed legislation to automatically become law Sunday. Opponents have vowed to challenge the new law, which the City Council approved a month ago. Unless a judge halts its implementation, New York City is the first major U.S. city to grant widespread municipal voting rights to non-citizens. More than a dozen communities across the U.S. already allow non-citizens to cast ballots in local elections, including 11 towns in Maryland and two in Vermont. Non-citizens still wouldn't be able to vote for presidents or member of Congress in federal races or in the state elections that pick the governor, judges and legislators. In Egypt, at least 16 people were killed and 18 injured in a road accident involving a bus and a microbus in Sinai Peninsula on Saturday. In a statement, the health ministry said the crash took place when a microbus collided with a public transportation bus on a road linking the city of Tor in southern Sinai to the city of Suez. The casualties were taken to a hospital in El Tor. In Pakistan, the death toll due to unprecedented snowfall and rush of tourists in hill station of Murray reached 23 on Sunday after a minor girl suffering from severe cold and pneumonia died as she could not be rushed to the hospital in time. Thousands of people visited Murray after the picturesque town in Rawalpindi received a record-breaking snowfall. It has left the local administration helpless and freezing to death over 20 people in their stranded vehicles. Rescue officials told the television channel that at least 23 people have died. The government has declared Murray as a calamity hit area after heavy snowfall wrecked havoc in the city. The closure of the passport department in the capital city of Kabul has once again sparked reactions from the people. As they desperately seek the resumption of the process as quickly as possible, local media reported. The passport department in Kabul was closed when it was attacked in December last year. However, officials said that passport departments are operational in other provinces. But passport applicants in Kabul said they are desperately waiting for the department to resume its activities. According to the Afghan media, the department has halted its activities two times in the last few months following the fall of the Ashraf Ghani government. Meanwhile, the online registration system is not functioning anymore. Passport applicants on Saturday, Alam Gulhaqani, Head of the Passport Department announced that the online application for passports is not functioning due to technical issues. In view of rising COVID-19 cases in Nepal, the COVID Crisis Management Center on Sunday has recommended to the Cabinet to shut schools until 29th of January. A meeting of CCMC summoned in wake of rising COVID infection in the nation made recommendations which now would need to go need to undergo cabinet approval to be implemented. As per the official, the decision has been taken as the students are yet to be vaccinated against COVID and the possibility of the third wave induced by Omicron variant. Though the directorial meeting of overseeing mechanism can execute decisions, Sunday's meeting was made by a managerial meeting which has the provision to undergo cabinet approval. Along with, the body has made vaccination certificates mandatory to take public services or use public places starting from January the 17th. 
India's Ministry of Ayush will organize global Surya Namaskar demonstration program on 14th January Makar Sankranti for 75 lakh people globally. On this day the Surya Namaskar is offered as a salutation to the sun to exhibit one's gratitude for each of its rays as it nurtures all living beings. The sun as the primary source of energy is critical not only for the continuation of the food chain but it also energizes the mind and body of human beings. The Mars Surya Namaskar demonstration also intends to carry the message of climate change and global warming. The ministry said the event will underline the importance of Makar Sankranti in our cultural and spiritual heritage. The Surya Namaskar is a set of 8 asanas performed in 12 steps with coordination of the body and mind. The Tibetan language service of All India Radio will broadcast a new program Bodhi Sattva Ways of Life based on preachings of His Holiness the Lai Lama from Monday 10th January. The program can be heard on shortwave frequencies. It may be recalled that external services division of All India Radio has doubled its broadcast time in Tibetan since 3rd January. The transmission hours have gone up from 1.5 hours a day to 3 hours a day. New programs like Vishwa Samachar Tibetan folk songs have been added to the broadcast. External service of All India Radio broadcast in Tibetan can be accessed every day between 6:30 a.m. in the morning on 9875 meter shortwave frequency and at 4:15 p.m. on 11590 meter shortwave frequency. The YouTube live streaming is available on AIR World Service and it can be accessed on the news on AIR app. In tennis, world number one Ashley Barty has won the Adelaide International by crushing world number 14 Elena Rabikina of Kazakhstan 6-3-6-2 in women's singles final at Canberra today. This was Barty's 14th career singles title and second in Adelaide. In the other tennis event underway in Australia, second seed Simona Halep clinched the Melbourne Somerset one women's single title after beating third seed Veronica. Kudar Metova in the final today. It was the 23rd career WTA single title for Halep. In men's singles, the 20-time Grand Slam champion Rafael Nadal defeated American Maxine Cressy in the men's single final of the Melbourne Somerset ATP 250 event today to lift the trophy at the Rod Laver Arena. In tennis, unseeded pair of Rohan Bopanna, Ram Kumar Ramanathan has won the Adelaide International Doubles Trophy in Australia. Teaming up for the first time on the ATP Tour, the Indian pair beat top seed Ivan Dodik Marcelo Mela in straight sets 7-6-6-1 to win the trophy. It was Bopanna's 20th ATP Doubles title and first for Ram Kumar. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The New York Times reports that the Biden administration and its allies are developing new possible sanctions ahead of a series of meetings to defuse the crisis with Moscow. Washington Post notes that Kazakhstan officials say 164 dead in protest, country now stabilized. The Wall Street Journal notes Russia's Putin seizes on crisis to assert control over former Soviet republics. Sputnik News quoting Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergey Rabkov reports that Russia is not prepared to discuss with the US and NATO any demands for de-escalation measures on its own territory in the course of the upcoming security talks. And now a quick look at the headlines once again. India's Urjit Patel appointed as Vice President of Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says Indian diaspora has distinguished itself all over the world and excelled in different spheres. External Affairs Minister of India Dr S Jayashankar says India France cooperation with respect to Indo Indo Pacific has a larger significance. United States and Japan agreed to keep American troops within their bases as worries grew about a sharp rise in coronavirus cases. And in tennis, world number 1 Ashley Barty wins Adelaide International while Simona Halep claims Melbourne Somerset title of women's single. And now to end let us listen to Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan Vaishnav Jan by artists from Bangladesh
And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.